This video is part of an audiobook featuring the book 3D Printing by John Jordan, a part of the MIT Press Essential Knowledge series. For more audiobooks, please visit my YouTube channel or my website for downloads. Chapter 4 3D Printing in Consumer Markets the 3D printer has not become the household appliance its most avid enthusiasts predicted in the early 2010s, but it's making definite inroads into mass markets. While CAD file creation primarily remains the province of trained, skilled technicians, consumer 3D printing has, printing has taken off in schools. Finally, even though most people may not print on their own, 3D printed products are emerging in more markets every year. Maker culture. In the past 15 years or so, there has been a resurgence of interest in taking things apart and possibly voiding the warranty, as well as in creating things at home or in school. At a time when shop classes declined in popularity in US, cool, US schools, in part because high schools emphasized pre-college educations for most students, a bottom-up maker culture has emerged. This culture has flourished for the following reasons. One, creating physical products, whether scarves, robots, or decorative items, creates a sense of accomplishment that abstract symbolic ana analysis and manipulation do not. Two, PCs have declined in importance as smartphones, tablets, and other tools have embedded computing in daily life rather than isolated in a box on a desktop. 3. The same impulse that gave rides to hot rotting cars in the 1960s and 70s can find expression not in automobiles, which are much less amenable to hardware modification given the number of embedded computer controlled systems today but in tinkering with drones, home brewing, and even life sciences, as at the DIY biosphere. 4. Crowdsourcing and crowdfunding both enable toolmakers to get their creations to market and allow small-scale makers to find audiences for unique products, as Etsy. 5. The open source software ethos has influenced many makers to adopt a similar attitude toward hardware designs and knowledge. Readily available plans and advice, often in video form, make it much easier for people to learn new skills or to be inspired by clever thinking. And six, physical instantations or instantiations of this culture, whether in maker spaces or at maker fairs, which can draw hundreds of thousands of attendees, contribute to the online vitality of ideas and resources. Dale Doherty co-founded O'Reilly Media, a leading publisher of technical manuals for web and open source software, founded Make Magazine, and launched the Maker Fairs. He speaks of making as an essential human trait. Everyone who cooks, knits, or gardens is a maker, in his view, but there is a historically American variation that emphasized tinkering. While the ability to construct a house, fix a car, or sew your own clothes was once a necessity, he finds that people are finding their lives enriched by creating something new and learning new skills. While his magazine has helped create the larger movement, maker culture is also a creature of social media. The internet, in turn, spurs people to connect in real life, to see what each other has built, and to learn how they did it. A milestone in desktop 3D printing was the Rep Rap project. Launched in 2005 by Adrian Boyer at the University of Bath, Rep Rap, meaning replicating rapid prototyper, is an open source 3D printer that is designed to replicate itself that is to print the plastic parts of another 3D printer. As of 2018, kits were available for $300 and up. A particularly popular variant by Joseph Prusa of Prague runs $599 and was shipping 6,000 units per month in 2018. Commercial entities are also free to use the design without giving back to the community, since the open license does not legally preclude this behavior. 
Rep Rap gained commercial momentum in 2007, and many consumers report that this machine provided their first exposure to home 3D printers. The community source documentation and software have both steadily improved, so the RepRep has become, in its high-end incarnations, a steadily, an extremely capable 3D printer. The same holds true for the entire category. Machines costing less than $1,500 can challenge professional machines selling for two to four times that price, creating a dilemma for machine manufacturers. Another open source project based in Colorado originates with Aleph Objects, a company of more than 200 people. The Lulzbot Taz 6 is priced at $2,500, though a miniature version costs half as much, but is sophisticated enough to be used in engineering applications. The full-size Lulzbot has a larger build volume than most desktop printers and includes other features aimed at improving reliability and usability. In a market where many manufacturers lock down software or proprietary filament or powder, the Lulzbot runs on open source software that can be modified by the user and will never be locked down by the manufacturer. Nearly 50, 50, 50 different filaments from multiple sources were available on the company's website. Against this broader backdrop, the emergence of low-cost, easy-to-operate 3D printers enables makers to do new things, and it captures sales from individuals, schools, and other shared resources that seek to inspire STEM education and to empower individuals to create more of their own environment. In addition, as people across the world continue to migrate to cities, the lack of garages and basements in apartment and condominium buildings creates the opportunity for shared spaces, such as tech shop, to provide access to tools and resources much as a health club sells membership by the month or by the drop-in visit. Science slash technology museums are adopting the same approach for young visitors in some workshops, providing tools, instructions, and open-ended encouragement rather than featuring only tightly defined, hands-on exhibits that teach a pre-specified lesson. This infrastructure, both social and physical, is important. A 3D printer in a home shop or basement is likely to sit idle after the novelty wears off in many households. In a school or maker space, however, that same printer benefits from the community of makers and learners. In a context of software, measurement instruments, cutting tools, computers, and people with various needs and ideas, the printer is set into a larger creative and productive milieu where a variety of tools can be utilized in combination to get things done. O'Reilly Media began publishing Make Magazine in 2005, and 3D printing has been frequently featured. The most notable example was an Ultimate Guide to 3D Printing in 2012, and the magazine's website is regularly updated with product comparisons, sample projects, and other resources. As of early 2018, more than 40 models had been reviewed, at prices ranging from $350 to $4,000. What are people actually making? No systematic answer appears to emerge from the academic literature. Make magazine suggested more than 100 household items in 2015, though many are of dubious usefulness. In part, this lack of plans reflects the low cost and wide availability of commercial molded plastic items. It will take time for imagination and to some extent design software to catch up to the capabilities of the fabrication technology. The Make Magazine survey went room by room through the house. A lemon squeezer or custom cookie cutter for the kitchen. Soap dishes or razor holders for the bathroom. Lots of plastic game pieces for the rec room. And plastic des desktop organizers for the home office. The contrast with industrial items is instructive. Manufacturers of additive manufacturing machines were asked, how do your customers use the parts built on your systems? The main answers with percentage of responses. First, functional parts, 33.8%. Prototypes for fit and assembly, 16%. 
Education slash research, 10.7%. Patterns for metal casing, 8.3%. Patterns for prototype tooling, 7.4%. Tooling components, 7.4%. Visual aids, including designers and medical professionals, 7.3%. And last, presentation models, including architectural, 7.1%. Note that functional parts, where many household items would fit, is a minority of the usage in engineering and related settings. Few households need architectural models, casting molds, or other tooling for mass production. This disconnect might help explain the dramatic slowdown in consumer adoption of 3D printers, and the capital market's disappointment in companies like MakerBot, now owned by Stratasys. These consumer-facing companies helped create high expectations in 2014 and 2015, when the promise of mass numbers of home printers drove valuations up to dizzying levels. Now, things are more mundane. John Kowola is North American president for 3D printing company Ultimaker. Regarding the early hype, he made an apt comparison. Saying that there would be 3D printers in every home would be like saying every home has a sewing machine. Just the people who sew have sewing machines. As it turned out, home 3D printers have been purchased by savvy, capable enthusiasts, not the mass market, because it's pretty complicated still to translate vision to reality. There aren't very many, or ki very ma very many killer applications for the regular guy to make stuff, Kawola added. One class of home printed items holds great promise. Broken plastic pieces, whether tent stakes, shower curtain hooks, or knobs. Generating prints of these things requires either a good 3D scanner, currently costing anywhere from less than $100 to more than $50,000, or a digital file from either the original manufacturer or some other source. Intellectual property issues emerge quickly. They will be discussed in Chapter 6 in more detail. Teenage Engineering, a Swedish company that sells inexpensive synthesizers, began offering replacement parts as CAD files in 2012. If the customer lacks a 3D printer, a company called Shapeways will print the file, then mail the output. A survey of consumers by the Git 3D Smart Consultancy in 2014 produced some revealing sentiments. Overall, consumer awareness seemed low, which is unsurprising. The biggest group, 49% of those surveys, replied to the question, what about 3D printing seems most interesting, by saying that it helps make products available that might not be otherwise. This is the so-called long tail at work. Much as Netflix, in its DVD days, eBay and YouTube have a small number of hits and vast numbers of niche or zero audience items available, so too do many fans of 3D printing see an escape from retail uniformity that is necessitated by mass production and mass marketing. Customization was listed by about a fifth of respondents, then 16% noted the ability to watch products being made as being most interesting. 14% cited sustainability, Taken together, these results fit in with a growing resistance to mall-based retail, a growing green sensibility, and a desire for uniqueness in one's personal possessions. It will be important to differentiate between consumer demand for 3D printers and for 3D printed goods, whether medical devices, footwear, decorative items, jewelry, or whatever. As more production, including customization, moves onto additive platforms, tastes will change to create more demand for everything from customized trophies, mom, that's me, to better fitting shoes to custom car seats. Research has shown that people can be uniquely identified by their pattern of sitting, so theoretically, everyone needs a unique seat. Predicting consumer trends is impossible, so trying to guess if there will be some killer app, as they used to be called, that will drive wider demand for home printers. Beyond hobbyists seems futile. Compared to the rhetoric of 2012, when some were comparing 3D printing to the early days of the personal computer movement, 
With the consumer growth rates that implied, sales of desktop printers seemed to be migrating to enterprise users. These people had the software, the knowledge, and the stream of work, things that need to be printed for design and prototyping purposes, to sustain the investment. At Ford, engineers have come to rely on the technology for new vehicle development, with more than 100,000 parts printed in 2017. Production parts are expected to increase down the line, but the point here is that desktop printers have more a natural home in R&D facilities than in most American garages. Consumer products, however, seem like a massive market waiting for production to catch up to the latent demand. A quick survey around a household reveals multiple opportunities to improve on mass production. Handles for everything from toothbrushes to kitchen knives could be customized for age, arthritis, physical limitation, including loss of digits, handedness, left versus right, precision, comfort, and other attributes. The success of the OXO Good Grips franchise is one precedent here. Splints for broken fingers, sprained ankles, and the like could be made from multiple materials. Hard where the body is soft, pliable where the body is bony, in school or other colors, and recycled at the end of use. Providing replacement knobs for kitchen appliances is already a thriving niche industry, as at knockoutknobs.com. Printing household items with a built-in tile or similar RFID tag could mean the end of lost key rings, lost remote controls, and lost eyeglasses. Speaking of glasses, what happens to the worldwide oligopoly of eyeglass frame manufacturers when lenses, nose pieces, frames, hinges, and earpieces can be printed in one integrated pass? Cleated sports shoes have, al have already been made for elite athletes using 3D printing. What could happen if open source designs bring similar, multi material technology to the everyday soccer player with custom fitting capability? at lower prices. Superfeet is already printing custom insoles and Ultimate Ears produces custom earpieces for audio earbuds. How much of everyday life will be improved when such invisible items fit better and don't produce discomfort? Protective equipment, whether a hard hat, bicycle helmet, shin guard, or earmuff works best when it fits well. Similarly, the entire field of workplace ergonomics at desks, job sites, and factories could be reinvented. Toys could be custom fitted, personalized, and made more appealing with a wider range of skin tones and accessories for dolls, personalized game pieces, and fit options for handheld devices like joysticks. Lego makes custom minifigures, but with a minimum order of 50 pieces. Many people want only one or two. Children and Schools 3D printing is finding its way into many school curricula, where it can help energize students to consider how the world of computing and physical fabrication, art, manufacturing, craft, intersect. As employers look ahead, meanwhile, they see the need for, digital ma for a digital manufacturing workforce, and many companies have donated money, expertise, and or materials to help encourage this set of skills and attributes. To take only one example, GE donated printers to more than 400 schools as a part of a $10 million five-year investment. More than 180,000 students are estimated to be effective. The donation includes a wind turbine simulation software, so students can learn problem solving, team collaboration, written and verbal skills, and critical thinking skills in the context of a manufacturing challenge. Seven countries are included, China, Canada, Germany, India, Spain, the UK, and the United States. There are many potential pedagogical benefits. A number of educators have identified a cluster of these. 1. Art and making go together. The fact that 3D printing integrates shape, structure, color, and textures moves it into the world of real-life design, where multiple disciplines must interact to create a successful outcome. Students who might not like art often enjoy expressing themselves through a new medium. 
Two, reaching alternative working styles. Many teachers report that their most engaged 3D printer users are students who were on the outside looking in to traditional methods. In the United Kingdom, it was reported that a head teacher working in a challenging school said that one pupil in particular, who refused not to swear at teaching staff, became the model pupil when given access to the Ultimaker, Ultimaker 2 because he could see his ideas coming to life. Well, that's important. At least one other school is using 3D printing as a tool to re-engage students who have dropped out. 3. Every subject can be hands-on. Biology? Print a heart or a lung or an extinct species of animal. History? Print a Roman amphora or a Mayan temple. Geology? Mountain ranges and rock strata make more sense in three dimensions. Folklore? What did the hollow look like before it was flooded to make a lake? Mechanics? How to do motors and transmissions that actually work. It's hard to find a subject where there isn't an application. 4. Making starts early. Few families have the financial and intellectual resources to buy 3D printers, but many children take to the technology. As opposed to many STEM curricula, 3D printers connect students with maker culture, including broader discussions of intellectual property, tips and techniques, and collaboration. Every maker has at some point been bootstrapped by another person who provided a timely tip, tool loan, or helping hand. 5. Identifying talent. The technology of 3D printing allows students who might not excel at traditional reading, writing, and calculation to find a tool for both expression, this is what I created, and analysis, this is what I figured out. Put another way, students get to create things rather than only consume other people's words or ideas. 6. Teamwork and collaboration. In some schools, distinct distinctions between grade levels are minimized by putting a younger and an older student together to work on a 3D printing challenge. As science fairs and robot competitions have done for decades, 3D printing challenges can build school spirit and let a new group of students who aren't athletes or spelling champions emerge and get positive attention. 7. Address real-world problems. Scientists and engineers are typically excited to help students learn about 3D printing. Rather than making the same chess pieces or desk organizers as everyone else, adult experts who interact with students by bringing real challenges to the classroom can benefit all parties concerned. Getting adult 3D printing users into the classroom also makes STEM real in ways that book learning cannot, enhancing students' career awareness of technical and engineering-related fields. 8. Making technology visible. In contrast to a 1960s car or an electric fan, many modern devices are technical technological black boxes and are thus difficult to understand. Digital technologies in particular are, are opaque to many people, including many computer science majors who have never touched a CPU or memory. 3D printing is a great antidote to this tendency. As students can see, layer by layer, the transformation from mathematical equations into physical shapes. 9. Teaching Kids to Fail Joris Peels is a Dutch pioneer in 3D printing, having worked for many industry startups. He makes the excellent point that 3D printing teaches students that failure is normal and beneficial. When working with kids or even post-graduate young designers, he writes, I'm often taken aback at just how afraid they are of failing, just how much they seek approval or guidance. In contrast, when I work on designing or making things, I try to fail as hard as I can. This is a key skill. As with any engineering mindset, rarely able to be taught before college, iteration and creative problem solving are their own reward. Peels put it very succinctly. The goal is to learn not to worry, but rather learn to improve. 
Failing fast has become a management bu buzzword, but the idea has merit, and 3D printing can teach students this essential attitude and skill. Outcomes. Sorry, 10. Outcomes. Even with proper curricula, 3D printers have not been in schools long enough to do credible studies of effects and outcomes. Thus far, most of the scholarship is speculative, based on extremely limited samples, or both. For example, researchers find that students can learn through multiple pathways, literally their fingertips, in addition to rote memorization, reducing students' cognitive load when learning by alleviating working memory constraints. This, a study of teacher education in Israel may be a harbinger of changes in student classrooms. According to the authors, our ongoing study indicates that the CDIO, conceive, design, implement, operate approach, can be applied to basic learning pedagogical fundamentals, hmm. training technological skills, and teaching practice. The study provides indications that learning activities in the courses facilitate development of visual literacy skills. It is important to note that those results came when 3D printing was deployed alongside instruction in design skills. More of these kinds of insights are needed before broad classroom deployment can drive measurable results. Health and Medicine Lots of attention is being paid to futuristic applications of 3D printing, such as human tissue, exoskeletons, or skin. We will address those in Chapter 7, but many people are surprised by the degree to which additive manufacturing is already well established. Surgical implants are discussed elsewhere in this book, but two areas of medicine capitalize on the fact that every human is unique, often across the two lateral sides. For example, few people's feet are the exact same shoe size. Dental clinics are using 3D printing to make implants, whether as small as a single crown or as large as a section of someone's head bones. A key development in this trend is the development of cone beam computed tomography, CBCT, a new imaging technology invented in Italy and commercialized around the year 2000. CBCT facilitates the creation of 3D volumetric models that can be passed to a printer for, for fabrication. The change has been momentous for dental labs, many of which have been moving to China. A skilled artisan can produce about 12 dental crowns in one day. According to EOS, a German manufacturer of 3D printers, their machines can produce up to 450 crowns in that same one-day period. In addition, 3D printing frees the skilled prosthetic makers to do other, more involved tasks such as working with enamel. As a result, many dental offices have installed 3D printers on site, shortening turnaround from weeks, with physical molds and artisanal manufacturing, to a few hours. Additive technologies that create complex structures with little waste are teamed with milling tools that can create high precision connecting surfaces because of the higher strength obtainable from solid pouring, combining the best of both worlds. In addition, some lower cost 3D printing technologies are useful for making guides, prototypes, or splints, as with some forms of orthodontia. In these cases, the material might not be sufficiently strong for implantation, or it may not be suitable for autoclaving and other sterilization techniques. Another major use of additive techniques in dentistry incur occurs at Invisalign, which is a newcomer to the orthodontic field. The company uses 3D scanning of the mouth to map out a treatment plan, then prints a, set, a new set of personalized fixtures in which thin plastic is thermoformed over an additively produced base pattern for each patient to swap out about once a week. The clear fixtures are also removable, and so represent an improvement over manually adjusted wires and metal braces. The company prints an average 17 million unique aligners annually, and sales have been growing at a rate of 30% a year, as more dentists get familiar with and trained on the system. Metal-capable 3D printing methods are of great interest to dentists. 
In some cases, printing makes possible the use of hard metals, such as cobalt chrome, that are hard to work with in traditional dental methods, but are desirable for their mechanical and bonding properties. Not being limited to gold gives reconstructive dentists greater design freedom and therefore more clinical flexibility. For all of these advantages, details are still being worked out. What are the practice economics, including insurance reimbursement, of a scanner, a dedicated technician, or a printer, or fleet of printers, in terms of break-even point for return on investment? What are the health and safety considerations of powdered plastics and metals, potentially noxious gases produced by heating those powders, and hazardous and or biomedical waste? What are the key customer service, financial, and regulatory considerations of buying the service from a lab versus building capacity internally? These answers will become clearer in the coming years, but dentists will remain in the vanguard of additive technology for the foreseeable future. The other area where 3D printing has been widely adopted is in hearing aids. Just as with dentistry, every fit is a custom one, so the technology makes sense. As of 2013, it was estimated that more than 10 million hearing aids worldwide had been 3D printed. As of 2017, 97% of all hearing aids produced worldwide used 3D printing in their manufacture. Once again, economics drove the transition. Cast molds used to be converted into pageant prostheses by skilled artisans in a nine-step process that took more than a week. Compare that to the streamlined path from laser scanning to generate about 10,000 da 100,000 data points of each unique ear, to modeling, to printing. A batch of shells can be 3D printed in two to three hours, often using VAT polymerization. Both Phonak, a Swiss company, and US-based Starkey use the technology, which has redu reduced returns, resulting from poor fit, from 40% to 10%. As we have seen, the world of sport provides many opportunities for short production runs of high-performance materials to be subjected to extreme stresses. Few of us drive Formula One racing cars or compete in the Olympics, but additive technologies are still finding their way into everyday life. The robot bike company was started in 2013 by college classmates from Bath University who had graduated into serious engineering jobs, but remained connected by their love of mountain biking from 15 years prior. Robot Bike is able to address a common problem. Bike riders come in all shapes, sizes, and abilities, but mass production bike frames come in only three or four variations. Their, re their solution is to build custom bikes using varying lengths of carbon fiber tubes combined with 3D printed titanium lugs. Because different tube lengths dictate different angles for the joints, and different riders generate different loads on the frame, Robot Bike built a sophisticated software front end to optimize bike's bicycle design for each rider, turning measurements and preferences into a build via topology optimization and parametric CAD fed into the third-party additive fabricator's build preparation engine. Whew. While the resulting bike is expensive, Reviews have been ecstatic. This new tool in the engineer's arsenal has helped the innovators at Robot Bike develop an early, sorry, an entirely new type of machine, one impossible under former manufacturing constraints. Looking forward. It's hard to envision a 3D printer in most households. That said, it's not hard to see 3D printing having an impact on many households. The distinction lies in the complexity of making. CAD software and overall printing process are too hard for casual customers to pick up. One of my students reported buying a 3D printer and not touching it for more than a year after purchase. At the same time, the number of printers in the media commons at Penn State has soared from 2 to 32 over three years, and there are times when, it, when use is limited to classwork because the queues are so long, four days as of this writing. Much of what will drive adoption is familiarity with what is possible. Many millennials resist throwaway culture, 
so being able to repair household items should drive one strand of uptake. Customization of one's phone case, keychain, wedding cake, and knife handles can be a second growth area. One's familiarity and awareness ramp up along with ease of use. Finally, what might be called body appliances, such as orthotics, joint braces, eyeglasses, earpieces, and so on, combine customization, the need for rapid turnaround, and massive market size. It is easy to imagine Amazon having a measurement kiosks at Whole Foods, groceries, for these kinds of products. The technologies of scanning, design, and build preparation are getting good enough, as are new printing methods, for such a scenario to make sense. At this juncture, the biggest hurdle to mobilizing public awareness and developing a sustainable yet defensible business model. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and visit my channel for more exciting content.